Hello, welcome to Chess with Lisa. Today we are going to be going over a quick and short game in the Sicilian Dragon played by my student. I was very happy with um, the continuation uh, that they found in the game, uh, especially since recently we have been go going over some theory in the Accelerated Dragon. Well, let's begin. White starts off with e4. Black starts off with c5. c5 is the Sicilian. It's not the dragon just yet, just the Sicilian. Knight goes to c3. Uh, usually when white starts off with knight to c3 instead of moving knight to f3, I expect white to go into a king's Indian attack type setup. However, I was quite surprised that that was not played here. Of course, if white doesn't know too much theory uh, as white, Knight c3 could have just simply been a developing move. Knight to c6. Knight to c6 is how the accelerated dragon starts. For example, if black played pawn to d6 on move 2, this is what we would be known as the classical dra uh, dragon. And if g6 is played instead, this is what we call the hyper accelerated dragon. However, I encourage students to play the Accelerated Dragon simply because there are more traps. And you don't, you, a lot of the time, uh, you might not have to um, miss a tempo by playing d6 and d5. In some cases, you're going to be able to play d5 right away, which is one of the reasons why I do recommend to play the Accelerated Dragon over the Classical Dragon. Knight goes to f3, developing move, good. g6 continues the development of the dragon. This is actually where the dragon would uh, would be shown, is the fiend keto to bishop. d4. In the dragon, please remember that we are always going to capture on d4. It doesn't matter if the pawn is being supported by another pawn. We always capture on d4 because we want to uh, create like a semi-open uh, c-file for our rook in the future. C takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop g7. Now the knight is under attack twice. So white has to decide on what to do here. In this position, what white can do is they can play knight to b3, which is a very commonly played move, and another move would be to play bishop e3. Bishop e3 is main line. Instead, my opponent, uh, sorry, like my student's opponent, um, ended up capturing on c6 instead. Now, in this position, capturing on c6 is really not a good idea because it helps in the dragon. The b pawn captures the knight back, opens up the b file for our black rook, and we can use the bishop. And with the help of the rook and the bishop, we will be looking towards this target. Okay, so bishop e3 was played, knight f6, development move. Some of you might be wondering, uh, playing knight f6, doesn't this allow pawn to e5? Actually, after pawn goes to e5, there is a variation uh, in the opening theory where black sacrifices the pawn on d5, uh, and then gets a lot of compensation for the pawn because of white's lack of development and uh, king safety. Uh, if you want to see that, please, uh, you can check one of my other videos uh, with chess lessons with Wayne. Okay. The opponent did not make that move. Instead, they played queen to d2. Queen d2 is a very common idea with trying to trade off the bishop. I'm actually very happy that my student did not castle right away. Um, if black castles in this position, I think there's more instigation to uh, for white to play bishop to h6 and try to trade off the bishop. So just to show you, bishop h6, trading off the bishop. So I'm actually really, really happy that my student uh, decided to refrain from castling for now. Why? Because the king is actually quite safe in the center. Once castling is really needed, so rook b8 threatening the pawn on b2. So in this position, please keep in mind that if 
white captures the pawn on a7, it's still it's going to be a trade. Uh, however, black's rook gets to go on to the second rank, and now there's a lot of tension in white's position. So this trade would be good for black. In this position, white makes, in my opinion, a huge mistake and plays castle. Now, I guess it makes sense to do two things at once, where you protect something and you also get your king castled. However, actually castling on the queen side uh, encourages black to create a really intense attack. And actually castling falls into a little trap. After castling here, my student uh, didn't see the move right away, but he ended up seeing the move later. In this position here, there's actually knight takes e4. Notice how I mentioned earlier, right? The, the bishop and the rook um, are eyeing the pawn on b2. After knight takes e4, if white captures, bishop takes b2, king goes to b1, and we can at least win the queen. Um, yes, for sure. Like, here it's winning the queen. In the previous, uh, in what, what you're going to see in a second, there's actually even checkmating chances. But of course, it's better to it's better to make this move right away, because after queen goes to a5, white could play bishop to d3 and defend against the threat. However, white did not see it. After bishop c4, my student plays knight takes e4. Um, probably the best move is to not capture back the knight and play something like queen to d3. And after knight takes uh, c3, the best move is actually not to capture this knight back. Because if you do, now there are checkmating chances for black again. It's pretty bad situation here for white. However, white did capture in the game. Bishop takes b2. King goes to b1. And of course, we create a discovered attack on the queen. Now, in this position, if, if white did not want to fall for a checkmate, they would play bishop to b3, and this position is pretty bad, and black should be able to win this game, um, having a queen versus a knight and a bishop. However, the person played king to c1. My student was uh, thinking mostly about the queen in this position, and he admitted it, because uh, when we were going over the game, he was saying he was so focused on the queen rather than on checkmate possibilities, but um, black to move and checkmate in one move. Pause the video if you want to test yourself. Uh, but the answer is queen to a3, and we have a checkmate. Uh, even though after bishop takes d2, rook takes d2, my student continued on really, really well uh, to win even more material. And white did resign after realizing that they're losing the rook on h1. The reason why I wanted to upload this video is for those of you who are considering to play the dragon and see how quickly you can destroy your opponent if they do not know what they are doing. So I do want to make a mention on why white, uh, what, what was white's two big mistakes to of course get into that losing scenario. Number one, white captured on c6. If you are playing white against the dragon, what you should be doing is you should be trying to hold the center. Um, I would even encourage as white to play the Marazzi bind. It's when you develop your pawn on c4 first before you bring out the knight to c3. Uh, the second mistake was castling, because of course it led into this trap. Now please keep in mind that even if there wasn't a trap, I don't recommend white to castle in that direction anyways, because uh, as, as I said a few times in this video, 
there are so many uh, different ways that black can get the pieces into the attack. So those are the two, uh, in my opinion. Uh, of course, castling is more of a mistake than capturing on c6, but I'm letting you know how these mistakes kind of led up to uh, white's, um, white's loss. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will be uploading more videos like this of my students' games. And I will also be uploading my own games in the Nimzo, Larson, and uh, Sicilian defense. Please uh, share and like with your friends. Have an amazing day. Keep chessin', everyone.